Hey guys, uh, just want to do a quick video. Now I say it's going to be quick, but I am going to end up taking this thing apart and making some modifications to it again. But um, I just want to follow up from where I left off last time because I'm not completely satisfied. There are a few things I did forget to mention that I did want to cover and uh, well, here we are. Um, there are also a few things that I didn't notice the first time around. Uh, I do want to point out that my problems booting the EverDrive may or may not have been related to my batteries. Uh, I did just pull them off the charger. They were, judging by the voltage they were at and how much power just went into them, I'm assuming they were about two-thirds charged. Um, so they weren't close to dead, but they certainly weren't fully charged. and. I don't know, this thing, this kit seems to work significantly better at higher voltages, regardless of how much actual power is left in your cells. Um, higher voltage seems to be better. Uh, so if you do a lithium ion battery mod to your Game Boy, that might be even best for this particular kit. Now, one of the things that I did want to mention is that I use this particular motherboard because this is the motherboard I used in my original, in the uh, Funny Playing IPS kit mod, and this motherboard had that um, that dot, that noisy column of pixels on the right here. And uh, you'll notice this kit doesn't have that at all. Now this kit does have an issue with the last column. It seems, I, I don't know, I can't get the issue to reproduce on demand, really. There's, um, the, the last column of pixels will end up being duplicated, and it'll end up printing an extra column off to the side. And let me pop in some not-so-charged batteries. Let's see if we can't get it to reproduce here, because I think it's power-related. See if it even boots my EverDrive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Oh, what am I doing? It's not going to boot with that. It'll boot that way, though. Okay, now that it's on low brightness, let's try it again. See what I mean? The battery charge does make a rather significant difference. Kill the light so you can see the screen better on low brightness. If we continue, are we gonna get that now? Yeah, no, it's still not doing it. I'll, I'll throw a picture overlay on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about, but basically that last column of pixels is duplicated and then just print it again. You're not losing any actual screen real estate, you're just getting an extra column of pixels that's not supposed to be printed. Uh, but anyway, let's get on to... Actually, before I take this apart, because I'm not going to put it back together during this video. I'll just end the video once I take it apart. Let's take a look at the funny playing kit and this one side by side. So that was one of the things I forgot. I, I even went and grabbed this Game Boy and had it on my desk. So. Oh, and of course they're set to different times. Am I even in the same town in both? I'm not. There's a reason I had the save set to... Oh, shoot. See, there's one of those screen glitches again. I mean, one's night, the other's day, so we'll just have to go with it. But... Honestly, the colors look pretty much the same to me. The image size is going to be the same.
least you can compare the smoothness of the frames and whatnot. I like the button pads significantly more on my funny playing Game Boy, but that has nothing to do with the <laughs> the mod itself. It just has better button pads in it. Oh, I forgot to uh, increase the brightness. I moved one of the touch sensors under the glass, by the way. Only one of them. I forgot to move the other one. I think I'll move that when I have it open. But yeah, it's... I mean, it's... It, there's no meaningful difference, I think. Alright. That's enough of that. Let's get this thing torn apart so I can take a look at one of the things I completely failed to notice the first time around. So yeah, even on completely fresh charged batteries, I still get those screen glitches. Now, my kit may or may not be defective. The um, manufacturer was blaming my EverDrive for those screen glitches until I told them that I was getting it on this cart as well, and this cart is completely OEM. There's nothing... This isn't a flash cart or anything, this is just a honest-to-goodness original game. And uh, then they started looking at it and going, oh, something might actually be wrong then. Um, so I believe I'm going to be getting another kit in the mail to check out. But, uh, there were a, um, I actually spent the better part of today replacing parts on the PCB, but it, because I've been told that the power usage that I've measured is entirely too high as well. Um, you know, I, I, I replaced all four of the voltage regulators and still getting the same thing, so I don't really know what else I can replace, aside from checking all the resistors individually and seeing if there's any that are higher or lower than they should be. I also tried another Game Boy Color motherboard. Same issue. I went back to this one though because the sound on this one works. And I, and I just recapped this one recently. The other one needed to be recapped. But anyway, the reason I want to tear this apart again, I wanted to... Let me set that aside. I wanted to discuss these solder pads right here. Now, let's look at this. We have four pads here, a ground, which we can leave unconnected because this is just common ground and when the ribbon is plugged in, it'll uh, match up to ground on here. But these other uh, pads, select L and R, are for usually for brightness controls. Now, according to the manufacturer, these don't do anything. They're just there so that in the future when they do add um, button brightness controls, they already have the pads there and it's just easier. I'm assuming, you know, maybe it's just a firmware thing, like the hardware's support is there, but the software support isn't yet. So who knows, but let's, let's verify that. I completely missed this the first time around and, you know, quite frankly, I'm usually a little bit more observant than that. But I, I just have a hard time believing that they'd go, go as far as to put the hardware support in there without putting the software support. We know that they can do the button controls with no issues. So why, why did they neglect it this time, you know? That's what I want to know. So let me... Oh, that's already... I'm not going to wire this up to the Game Boy, to the buttons themselves. 
I'm just going to wire this up so I can test it on the bench. Which is going to involve shorting the select pad to ground. And then we'll just short L and R manually. Now I was joking about this because the Game Boy Color doesn't have an L and R button. But I suppose you could just wire it to um, like D-pad left and D-pad right. And tinning a wire this small is physically painful. In these pads here. Suppose I can bring that in for better view. I just need to rotate this up and out of the way. So by shorting select ground, that should basically always enable the brightness control modes and then I should just have to short L or R to ground as well to uh, trigger it. Now I suspect L would be to increment brightness and then R would be to increment the color palettes, but we got to actually solder this thing and check it out. Maybe just as simple as checking it might already be implemented. No, I don't think so. Those are wired to the FPGA, but they don't go to the same thing. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use. Smaller wire here, where is, I don't know where my red wire is, but I'll use my blue wire. I usually use my red wire mostly because, you know, it's just on top in the drawer, except today the blue wire was on top. It wasn't deliberate. I don't know why it's like that. Don't question it. Just go with it. All right. Oops. That is a terrible, gross, nasty joint. I hate it. But we'll go with it for now. Film in. I'd like to move the other um, touch sensor up here, but there's a screw post in the way. I didn't realize that. I'm missing a screw, it's stuck to my speaker. Not that it matters too much, I'm not putting this thing all the way back together. supply is also fully charged. Get that clip 
down there. We'll just pop in Tetris because it doesn't really matter. And I added a second potentiometer for fine tuning the uh, voltage so I don't have to spend 20 minutes trying to get it just right. So let's set it to 3 volts. Boom. Oh, fuck. Hang on. I can't believe you guys let me do that again. Where's the uh, bail? There it is. This is much easier to get in on a Game Boy that doesn't have a broken bail. There we go. Now oh, I forgot the game. Ooh, I'm on a roll. Okay. Alright. So I'm going to short one of these, uh, just trying to grab it, there we go. I take one of these wires and short it against the uh, the uh, link port, port housing, because that's a ground. And that doesn't appear to be doing anything. Try the other one. Oh, that did brightness, once. But I can't be sure that wasn't just because it's running right next to the brightness pad. And since the, uh, I'm not getting any pellets. Well, that's lame. Why would they include the uh, pads if, there you have it, I guess. I short them together, huh? Let's see if that does anything. Nope. Oh, and for those wondering, this is not a funny playing kit. This doesn't have the same features or functions as a funny playing kit. There's always a, an Easter egg function on the funny playing kits where you hold a button and it does something. Uh, so like, for example, on the Game Boy Advance SP kit, you hold the brightness button, it goes into super ultra bright mode, which they don't tell you. you. You can press it to toggle through the modes, but if you hold it, it goes into an extra mode that you can't normally get to. Um, on the Game Boy Advance kit, I actually don't think that does anything, but on the Game Boy Pocket kit, if you press and hold the palette button, it'll enable and disable the, um, the screen door effect, the, the grid line emulation that people keep incorrectly referring to as scan lines. Um, they're not scan lines, guys. This isn't a CRT. There was never a CRT in here. Um, but anyway, pressing and holding this touch sensor does nothing. All it does is change the palette the first time, and you can hold it as long as you want. It does nothing. Same thing with brightness. It'll just change the first time. That's not where my brightness pad is. It's right there. And nothing. It also doesn't work with my finger on the PCB. See? Nothing. So, now you know. I hope this follow-up was helpful. Uh, it certainly cleared up a few things that were bugging me. So, yeah. Catch y'all next time.